Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at global unique and link local static configuration. We'll be discussing static global unique configuration on a router and on a Windows host. And then we'll take a look at static configuration of a link local address. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. On a router, it's almost the same commands as you would use to configure IP version 4 as you use IP version 6 here. What you do here, here's an example of the command. Notice when you configure an IP version 4 address, it's just IP, but when we're doing IP version 6, it's IP version 6. So you need to remember to make that change. Then we say address, we give the actual address 2001 colon dba colon acad colon one colon colon one and then we put our slash and then our prefix our slash number right there very similar like we said to the ip version 4 right here's an example of configuring that global unicast address on g000 interface once again we are in r1 here we are in global configuration mode we go ahead, go into the interface. So we type interface gigabit ethernet 000. Notice once again, our prompt changes from global configuration into configuring an interface. Then we enter in our command IP version six. Cause once again, you have to make sure to put the IP version six in there, that version six, cause we're dealing with IP version six, then address. Then you put type in your address here. We are using the 2001 address again, a global unique address and then we put our slash number at that at the end uh the prefix number anytime we do anything with an interface we always remember to do a no shutdown and we have to turn that on physical interfaces are off by default so we have to turn them on no shutdown does that we can exit out we have now manually set our global unique address on our router interface for a pc for a windows host it's once again, very similar to IP version four. If you, if you have a global unique address and a link local address of the router, you can use either one of those as the default gateway. Best practice is always to use that link local address. This is the best practice. Always use that one because that way it's on your network. It's a, it's, we don't have to leave our network to get to it. If you use that globally, global unicast address i've seen it where it has to go out the out the link local address to find that globally unique or sorry that global unicast address and so the best practice here is always use your link local address one thing to look at is when you are setting a global unicast address using either dhcp6 or slack the link local address of the router, your default gateway, that's gonna be specified there as your default gateway. It's gonna use the link local address. FE80 colon colon one would be an example of what it uses. Here's an example of configuring it in IP version six address on a Windows host. Notice once again, we have said use the following address or we're manually setting the address. We went through, we typed in the address here. We don't put a slash 64 there. We don't put the prefix length there. We put it in the field below it. Just like in IP version four, you put the subnet separately. Here we put this that slash number, that prefix number separately. And then we enter in our default gateway. If we look here, remember the IP address and the default gateway need to be on the same network the beginning of these addresses are all the same. But like we said in the previous other slide, typically use your link local address. Link local addresses start with an FE80 colon colon, and then it could be like colon one, but it starts with that FE80. Normally what you would see, instead of the global unicast address here, of your default gateway, you would see this entered in as your default gateway. When setting a static link local unicast address on a router, 
The command is almost identical as setting a unicast address, an IP version 6 address, on an interface, except what we do here is we say IP version 6, we have our link local address, and then notice there is no slash number, there's no prefix at the end. All we do is we say link local. Now, down here we have an example. We have the R1, we're in global configuration mode, we go into the interface of gig ethernet 0 slash 0, we specify, we say IP version 6, address, here is the address that we are going to, and then we say link local. We say link local at that point in time. Of course, every time we do anything with an interface, we always do a no shutdown, type out exit, we've set that. This address, this FE80 colon colon one colon one, it can be set to both interfaces as long as it's unique on that link on that interface. One common practice is to change the address on each interface to help you identify it. Um, so right here, this could be for FE80. And what I see a lot of times is we use FE80 colon colon one. And so we have one here, we, you, if you have another interface, you can go FE80 colon colon two colon one. And that would signify that these are on different networks. Down here, this would be a zero. So we'd have zero, one, two. Those would all be identified as different interfaces. That just helps you troubleshoot and keep track on your router, which interface you are dealing with. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on global unique addresses and link local address static configurations. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode on my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.